So what, can you remember um, when, you, when you first met Gary? Um, what year it was? I, I mean, mean, to be honest, uh, there's a there's a saying about Welsh fellas that Welsh fellas, the only good Welsh fellas, are the ones that go and kind of, you know. No, but uh, can you remember what fucking year it was? That's what I'm fucking saying, man. That's what I'm getting to you. That's what I'm fucking saying. Like, we start with a fucking, you know, <laughs> thing, yeah, I think it was Elizabeth Taylor's quote saying the only good Welshman the fuck is the go to Seven Bridge and never come back, mm, right? Mm. And she also said, with your, you know, Welsh, you know, men generally, we don't hunt in packs, we are like lone sharks, yeah? Yeah. There's no fucking Welsh bars, is there? <laughs> In, no, no, there's no, no in Scottish no. either, but there's yeah. not the Welsh part, and yeah. I think. No. So in terms of, uh, you know, uh, you know, Gary, I mean, we kind of started off quite badly, actually, because he thought I was some poncy fucking posh twat. Posh twat. From Merthyr Tidville. Mm -hmm. Merthyr's posh might be there. Right? And I thought he was... So was there a bit of rivalry going on there between the two towns? There were certainly two fucking alpha males looking yeah. to kind of, you know, yeah. and basically, you know, he had no respect for me because I was doing like country western techno, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and I had no respect for him because he was pretending to be a dirty squatter. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and as it worked out, you know, kind of, uh, but yeah, we circled each other. We were like sort of kind of uh, you know, trepidation and cynicism. So, but as a fucking geezer, and as I got to know him, and I realised, and uh, uh, an old joke in the side, you know, you know, he, he ran a very cool crew of soldiers. Yeah. And, uh, and his reputation spoke for itself. If you're familiar, if your uh, viewers are familiar with that, it was one of the strongest illustrations known to man. And I found myself in our, I think it was the Sunrise Festival. Hey, Actually, it was with you, right? There. This is Steve right. from Alabama 3 talking about Gary D.S. Who was that? What was that? About Sunrise, when you took some. Uh, yeah, yeah, we talked. No, no, when we saw them, went to saw 2000 D.S. Yeah, what's oh, what's Alabama 3? Yeah. What is Alabama 3? Is that a drug, is it? Or? Yeah, it's a planet. <laughs> but we had a sanctuary in 2000 years we were in a fucking old tent. Yeah. One afternoon we crawled in like lizards off planet cyclone. <laughs> yeah. And I remember That's Gary good. Yeah, Gary came up to me and goes, get the fuck off because he could get the fuck off my stage and I'm lying in a field position. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know what? And I looked at the eye. Yeah. But it was a sanctuary yeah. because yeah. we <laughs> went we went, we found on the height of this trucking trip, we crawled into the fucking 2000 years fucking. He guarded his territory. He tried to get off my fucking stage. Yeah, and his he guarded twat. it. I was going to listen back. We were both Welsh, you were him. And he gently carried me to the side of the stage, but we lay there for half an hour to we calmed down. Well, yeah. he did yeah. as well while we were And there. he was sweet as fuck with us, yeah. Was but he was like, you know, he was, yeah. a, he, was a, he was a kind of, uh, you know. Gary guarded the stage like as if the Romans were in yeah. He guarded the stage like as if the Romans were coming over the fucking but, valley. But uh, I mean, he took, he took no prisoners. In that no, context. he wanted to do it properly, didn't he? And I, I had a really, really good relationship. I, I was like, you know, he, he failed to perceive us as a sellout yeah. fucking, uh, you know, country western techno band, which was kind of. But do you think, do you think he'd react to that way, or do you think that was just like a front? Or? Nah, it was, a lot front, it was just him because he was from a different valley from yeah. here, in Wales. I said, Jenny comes to a Wales team. Yeah. At the same time, I had a kind of, you know, long discussion with Gary about going, well, yeah. Free party squad, and it's all well and good, bro. You've got to put fucking bread and butter on your table. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, it was really interesting how we watching him develop as an artist. He took like organised stuff and money, yeah, we've got some dollars in here, mm. yeah. while still maintaining a uh, kind of uh, yeah. a warmth and integrity based in his underground. Well, and also about putting over with a, with a fucking uh, audience the size of someone like you, you need to put the message over you. Know, after Gary's demise, is that, you know, I've been seeing dead silence where he was at in terms of. I'm not saying a crossover, but certainly yeah, taking things the, the times now, you know, need, you know, Something what different. Gary was representing yeah. was very important. He was banned on the zeitgeist. Yeah. And, you know, the Lord works in mysterious ways. He maybe took for a higher fucking squat pie and then sell out to Boyo because yeah. you're going to be a famous, that you're a top motherfucker. Yeah. And yeah. he was nervous of that. Fair play to him. Very resistant to that. No, he was scared. I'd tell Bobby and his brother, he was scared of that. He oh, he hated it. I didn't like it. Him he did, that was his, his major fear. Was, was, because of how long we've done it, yeah, and we couldn't turn on it, you know, not even if he did, he wanted to anyway, but he carried, he carried that rock and roll on the road and that yeah. was the way he carried it. Yeah, man, we, that's, the way, the way, that's why I left in the end, because I, I wanted to feed my family properly, but with music, do you know what I mean?
great majority yeah. of people would just see it as a natural progression. Like yeah, but you know. when you've lived with people the way we, it was a yeah. way of life for us, yeah. so we couldn't yeah. do it. It was very important. We couldn't do it. Yeah. The whole thing yeah. can be, it, it's be, you know, can, it's, it's become a bit of a limitation on people, really, that whole selling out, you know, you can't you play outside the squat party or the travels. Yeah, yeah, but, yeah, but DS know. was, the 2000 DS was different. 2000 DS never could have. Because it was well, on that. that. On the other you could have as a you could have as a never entity, like he was with Dead Silence or whatever. But mm -hmm. as 2000, yes, we were the hardcore underground squat band, so you could never have made the that. The importance of, yeah. of Gary's legacy is the fact that what he motivated and got together. Yeah. We have a responsibility of yeah. any of us who were kind of been touched by his kind of fucking crazy mania. Fucking. Yeah. Motivation you know, is the word. You know. Are gonna we have to take that on because it's very inspiring. Already, you can see a dip because he, his energy was so fucking mad. Do you yeah. know what I mean? It might have yeah. been to some people, it might have been somebody moaning at him, or it might have been somebody fucking. But it was just his energy to inspire fucking parties to happen constantly, or over all in years, right, right from the fucking day one, right up until now. How can you drive yourself to do something for nothing mm. and keep doing it? Or you know, guy, the last thing you don't want to be turned into some kind of. Like, Icon, yeah. people were shy, so, but yeah. also he's yeah. more in a very much, and that's what I said before. He's yeah. very much people that call their faith in the bank, because mm -hmm. where what the lifestyle that Gary espoused and you know, mm -hmm. reputation for would have been a long term alternative, independent, autonomous kind of you know, uh, scenario, you know, which you know, which is the fucking you know, where young people are going to be at now. If, if more people now are squatting, are doing on sound system, put festivals on, and setting up on record labels or in music. Thing, you know, I think, and Gary's had a party now. You know, Gary and Traveller sites in 2000 S can't play outside squat parties and travel. You know, Gary DS was never. You know, I met him in 1992 on a Traveller site, but I was like a funky acid house raver, selling ecstasy to the fucking travellers in East Berlin, whatever. But he was never ever judgmental towards me. No, we weren't tied down. We, we played in like ever, uh, what ever, was it? Ever heaven, was heaven, the gay club. No, we played in there. We play anywhere. We could. Yeah, you know what I mean. What about this? What was a young lad come from the valleys? You know young punk rocker move, moving out of his little village and in the middle of fucking nowhere in Wales. He was a cunt. He was fucking a nightmare. Gary was a nightmare. My, my other brother will tell you more than me, but he used to go to the gigs, we used to go to the top, top rank in Cardiff, right? They'd walk out of there, mate, right? And skinheads, yeah, skinheads, yeah, skinheads, there'd be gangs of skinheads waiting, right? They'd walk through them and they'd be walking away and every fucking time Gary would turn around, run like fuck, dive head first into them and just have a... If he got through him about having a scrap, he'd run back for a scrap. Yeah, yeah. Just to have, just to let him know that he didn't give a fuck. Mm. Do you know what I mean? And was he good in the old head back? He used to die, always head first, die head first. See, that's why me yeah. and Gary got on, man. We used the same weapons. Oh, all mate, all, mate. Like, my big brother can tell me more about shit from them days. All I used to remember, I remember him coming home the one day with a fucking imprint of a Dr. Martin <laughs> on his forehead <laughs> in a fucking bruise. And he, uh, he had his passport photo taken, but he hit shot the uh, fucking grease after that. But he had an imprint of a fucking Martin where they'd fucking done him. And that's how it was in them days, wasn't it? it was staying, all, staying at the Rue Boys and all that. You'd go yeah. to a club and it'd be skins, punks, yeah. fucking tents. Who are you? Which side yeah. you on? Yeah, yeah. And it was got off him and he'd seen his crew working out and, you know, I was saying, bumping into him over the years, but I very much got a strong sense of that. You know, people around him, his posse, I was saying before, his soldiers, was he was quite caring them because he'd, he'd paid his dues. He'd been a fucking hooligan and a lunatic, you know, he had that respect amongst the Yeah, uh, well, it's growing up. very facilitated yeah. in terms of the crew around him. It's growing up. I popped up with that, blah, blah, blah. He kept his wisdom. You know, the ethos of looking after people, like Yeah, yeah which was very, yeah, no, came across very strong, yeah. particularly in the last few years. Yeah, was kind of portrayed it. That was when he was young, when he was fucking like a 16, 17, 18 year old, when he was like fighting in the streets of the skins. But when he took me on the road, and when we were growing up, when I was growing up, I was 10 years younger, he took me on the road when I was 14, I left school and went off with him. Do you know what I mean? My mum fucking hated him for it for the rest of his life, like, but I, you know. But we used to roll into fucking, like, East Berlin, places like that, in a bus full of hippies, in fucking neo-Nazi zones, man. Yeah. Like, we, but real, like, when we were in first in Dresden and places like that, we're talking about heavy skinhead areas. Yeah, yeah. And we yeah. used to turn up there as a punk mad band, open the doors of our bus, loads of dogs, loads of fucking mad crusties fall out. And we used to just we didn't sense. do it we didn't do them with the music, we'd do them with what we fucking were about. And that was it. Yeah, all of it to put together basically. But you know, it was just so many people sitting there. Yeah. But we rolled hard. We rolled fucking hard. We rolled all around America man. Three months around America we rolled like that. Yeah. Me and Gary, there's five of us in a fucking we hired we we toured America for three months like that. Exactly the same. 
rolling into places, just fucking doing what we were slagged off by all the magazines in America for being fucking, like, the Anarchist magazine, Maximum Rock and Roll, all these magazines slagged us off because we were fucking too wild, basically. Yeah. We were just, you know, in, 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 America, in America, yeah, in America, they're like the pigeonholes. They like to say you're yeah. a fucking, you're an anarchist or you're something. Because we were fucking just mad, G.G. Allen. Well, yeah. when, we, when we got to San Francisco, we stayed with G.G. Allen's yeah. guitarist. Yeah, that's, that's really, and we had a gig in this anarchist bookshop, right? Just in case anybody doesn't know, who was GGI? What our attitude was, was <coughs> a gig was just basically whatever he made it. So mm. he, could, he could fucking, st- it was a good, his band behind him were a real good punk band, mm. but say he should jump into the crowd and someone pushed him, he might punch him in the face. Basically, it was just a, a fucking whatever happened happens, but well, it's part of the gig. The yeah. He, 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 the yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So that's, that you know, a lot, chaos, of people, yeah. a lot of people didn't get his thing. And maybe sometimes I wouldn't. I might turn up at his gig and not get it. And, you know, but That's the point of good rock and roll. Yeah. Good, good rock and roll in 2000. Yes. No, you know, but, you know, it's about disturbance. You disturb yeah. people's heads. You, you roll yeah, into... What the fuck was that? Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, it's a hip-hop of his day, isn't it? It's a hip-hop. Like, day, it? it's yeah. a hip-hop. It's, you roll into an area, send in the message. Yeah. This is how we roll. And we're bringing a... But the difference with us was we took a buses. So we took our whole area with us. Not just a band. Mm. Our fucking way of life. Dogs fucking... Kids, people like the spiral tribe and all, like follow their route. Yeah. That's what I'm saying, after the Criminal they, Justice Act, after the yeah. Criminal Justice Act, which had laws, yeah. and after yeah. Castle Morton, yeah. 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 Exactly. Them, we were already a Broadway Castle Morton yeah. Yeah. and yeah. the spirals left that one boy and hit the fucking boat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, um, you know, we fucking raped and pillaged fucking Europe, didn't we? Mm. <laughs> you know what I mean? Mm. Siphoned our way, robbed our way, you know. Basically, you know, we, were, we got to Amsterdam, we did a gig, half the band left. So me and Gary then had to fucking smug, <laughs> take, take whatever we took from Amsterdam to mm. Spain mm. to survive, find the guitarists there, and that's how we, we toured for the next 10 years, was by, like, just Thievery picking, picking shenanigans. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, we'll see the pants shit. Yeah. Yeah. And, 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 and the, the fucking education of borders was what kept us alive. Because yeah. the music didn't. Yeah. It was what we knew we could take to the next place that would make money. Do you mm. know what I mean? Mm. And that was, you know, and you can't fault him for that because he was fucking special for that. You know what I mean?